Welcome to Metrocasting, I'm Doug Farley. Serving your fellow man has long been the motto or goal of many an organization in this country, but quite possibly none has done it as continuously and effectively as the American Red Cross. In our first segment, we spotlight our local American Red Cross agencies and the services they provide. Most everyone has heard of the American Red Cross. But what you may not know is just how many facets of our daily lives they are involved with in addition to the blood drives they are most commonly known for in this day and age. A brief history of the organization shows it is a champion of human rights, human needs, and humanity as a whole. After she founded the American Red Cross in 1881, Clara Barton and her ever-growing staff of volunteers around the nation began offering aid to those affected by fires, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, and other natural disasters, as well as offering aid and comfort to U.S. soldiers in combat overseas. As the head of this bastion of modern society, she also worked to get a worldwide measure passed concerning the fair and ethical treatment of wounded soldiers and prisoners of war. That measure became known as the Geneva Convention, which is still in effect today. Since those early years, the American Red Cross has become a leader in getting aid to those in need, wherever they may be around the world or right here at home. And locally, from Columbia and Luzerne counties to Monroe County in the Poconos, Red Cross employees and volunteers work endless hours to make sure that when you need them, and in some cases, when you don't even know you need them, they are there. Basically what the American Red Cross means to the community is that we are there to help people prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies. We help people when they need it the most, whether it be a blood product, whether it be a disaster uh, help, whether it be with a fire, uh, with CPR, and, and different corporations. So we help people wherever it's needed. The American Red Cross has a mission to help train people to be prepared for all emergencies. And emergencies are anything from blood drives, from needing blood, to disasters, to CPR and first aid, to make sure that everybody knows what to do in an emergency. Why do you believe so heartily in the Red Cross? Well, I wanted to um, do something more with my life, do something meaningful, and I thought the Red Cross was a wonderful place to start. Just helping people. I mean, just being that organization in the community that is there when people need us, um, particularly in disaster. When somebody has a fire, there's nothing more rewarding than being able to help people get back on their feet and just, just be there to get them through those first couple of days. What's the toughest part of this job? The same thing, being there when those people are going through the worst days of their lives. And it's emotional. It's, it, uh, you go home and you think about them and it's, it's tough. You have that feeling of satisfaction that someone was there for them, but it, is, it, it takes its emotional toll too. I guess sometimes it makes you appreciate what you have and sometimes you do take, take it home with you in your heart, but um, just the fact that either you've been able to help that person or if, we're, if we don't have a program that we can help that person, we can refer them someplace else. And I have to say that um, I feel that we really do go over and beyond the call of duty a lot of times if we see a person that's um, really in need and we'll work with other agencies. But um, when I talk to a, a girl in another agency and, and we get maybe upset because we can't help a particular person for whatever reason, and we always have to come back to reality that we, we can't save the world, although we'd like to. I think Red Cross is known more for um, blood, but disaster is, is what really is, is, our, is our main goal. And um, right now, we're not, we're not too worried about it, but I mean, with all this snow and everything melting, you know, we could have, you could have floods on, along the river and don't even know about it. You know, people don't even think about that because it's not raining, you know. Um, we're on, we're, we're by Route 80. There's, you know how many trucks are on 80? How many hazmat accidents could happen? If that happens, we need to evacuate because we're that close to the, to, um, to 80. And people don't think about those type of things. And of course we have the power plant, which, you know, people, I don't know how much to think about it, but if something like that would happen, you know, we'd have to help them, you know, set up a, set up a, uh, a con de con decontamination area, like at, in, um, Votech is where we go, you know. So when the phone rings, you, you never know what they're going to call and ask you for. And I do have a team. I do have uh, four people that go on calls with me. So usually if I get the call, I'll send someone out. If they're not able, if 
if um, they're able, they go out. And then I set up the, the hotel rooms for them, and I make sure I give them get the money and, and uh, clothing, make sure they have clothing. So what do you, if you hear the sad stories every day, how do, how do you walk out of here with a smile on your face every afternoon? Well, sometimes I don't. I, because sometimes when I talk to people on the phone and I hear their hard luck stories, I get off the phone and I almost cry, you know. And um, but if I can help them, then I can have a smile on my face, you know. If I can say to them, "Oh, you come in and fill out this and fill out that, and we'll be able to help you," and then that makes me happy. <laughs> we try to find a place that they can call so they don't feel so desperate that there's no place and there's nobody out there to help them you know and and like Dawn said it is very sad to hear them on the phone because um, the situation is bad in the area and you, and you can hear it in their voices and then they get the elderly people who um, only have a certain income coming in and then um, we can direct them to the aging office and they might be able to help them in some way and um, it's Sometimes, like Don said, you, you do feel good about it, and other times you don't because you feel helpless because there's nothing really you can do about it and just hope that the, whatever agency they call might be able to direct them to the right place. Personally, you can't have it, your heart can't be better than that, the helping that somebody else. With the blood, who knows, you know, how can you go out and spend an hour of your time and know you could be saving somebody's life? There's nothing else in this world that does that. The disasters, when that person's lost their home and their fire, the fires burned their home down and you're there to help get, alleviate some of their pain by giving them somewhere to sleep and some clothing to wear and some food so that they can think about other things that they need to think about versus where's my family going to put their head tonight. The Red Cross also offers classes on CPR as well as on water safety to keep somebody from drowning and they also offer instructions on proper babysitting techniques and how to be better prepared in the event of an emergency such as a fire, a flood, or other disaster. But of course, the Red Cross is probably best known for its local blood services. We were at a blood drive being held at the Pocono Raceway in Long Pond and got the details of where all those blood donations go. The Red Cross, especially the blood services, really supplies local hospitals much needed blood products. Uh, you know, we really take voluntary donors and so we really ask the general public to come out, support blood drives in their area to make sure there's an adequate uh, supply for hospitals. Um, much needed patients uh, need our products uh, to really have surgeries and other things, uh, elective surgeries, if they get in an automobile accident, uh, if they have any kind of cancer treatment, um, usually they're using Red Cross products. Now, giving blood mm -hmm. has changed over the last 10, 15 years or so. It's a little bit more detailed than it used to be. Sure. Well, there's a lot more testing. Um, you know, there's various testing, you know, HIV, you know, hepatitis, those types of things. So um, we definitely have, have got some more testing involved. It is a little more um, streamlined. We've streamlined the process a little bit to make it a little quicker uh, for, for blood donors. But uh, absolutely, it's uh, definitely definitely a great process now. We have blood mobiles four times a year, four times a, a month, and people need blood all the time. And um, one unit of blood helps three people. The machines behind us are double red cell machines, where basically uh, instead of donating one unit of blood, you actually donate two units of red blood cells. And what happens is, is the, uh, your blood come, goes into the machine, it, gets, it filters out the red blood cells, and then your plasma and platelets are put back into your body along with a saline solution to help replenish the fluids that we've just taken from you. And where will this blood that people give today, where will it go? Um, after the blood is collected today, um, sample tubes will be sent to a testing lab in Philadelphia to make sure it's safe for distribution to the community. Um, after which um, we will put it in storage and then when a hospital calls and needs the blood, it will get shipped directly to them helping to make those blood drives go smoothly, as well as all the other services provided by the Red Cross, including Meals on Wheels, are thousands upon thousands of volunteers. They are the backbone of this organization. Volunteering to me, it, I, it just gives you a good feeling, I think. It, it just, I think it gives people a, a, um, a um, makes them feel like they're, 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 um, they're important, they're worth something when, when they're volunteering. It gives me a sense of accomplishment, instead of sitting home doing nothing. Now tell me about when you're meeting the people that you're delivering to. What's that like? 
Well, a lot of the people are homebound. Some of them are um, older people, they can't cook for themselves, or they're disabled, so they can't get around in the kitchen and even prepare things for themselves. So we like to furnish them at least one hot meal a day and a snack for later in the day. And we, um, we give them a smile, mm -hmm. maybe say to them, um, you know, how you doing today? Make sure that they feel you know, that they're doing all right. Mm -hmm. It's heartwarming to do what we're doing. We do uh, create a relationship with them because we're there on a regular basis. Right, and we might have 15 to 20 meals a route to deliver. I don't think you realize that we have people around the area that really do need the help. I didn't realize it until I started with meals. Uh, the good they do is awesome. They do everything from helping fire victims immediately. They're on site. Um, disaster services. We open shelters. We provide food. There's organizations that donate um, military information. Uh, just getting word out to uh, the military if they have a sick relative that's in town. Uh, getting that word spread through the military. We're the only organization that does the military emergency communications. Now you may say, why would you need the American Red Cross when you have email and you have cell phones and families can be constantly in touch with their soldiers now? However, um, the American Red Cross are the ones that um, confirm the information. If someone has a birth, which is always a happy thing, um, the family contacts the American Red Cross the American Red Cross then has to contact the doctor or the hospital to verify the information so that when the soldier is granted leave, it's, it's for real, it's actual. Um, so that's our main job, and we're the only organization that does that. So as you can see, the American Red Cross does indeed provide invaluable services to communities at home and abroad. But imagine, if you will, what the world will be like without the American Red Cross. I think there'll be a lot of scrambling. Um, people will be uh, desperately trying to find blood, um, as well as, you know, if a uh, fire happens or an earthquake or something, I don't think a lot of people would know what to do without an organization like the Red Cross to be there. A fight. The world without Red Cross, um, it would be, it would just be awful. I, I don't know, I, I think it would be tough getting blood. I know we have, there was blood banks around, but I don't think, I don't know if the blood would be as um, pure and as, you know, as tested as it would for Red Cross. As far as a disaster, I don't know who would, who would possibly help out, you know, who would be there to help people that, that were in a fire, to help them get back on their feet. Um, people that were homeless, um, you know, we, we do pet people up if they're homeless, if, if the situation is bad. So I think that the world would be in a real bad state if we didn't have the Red Cross. Well, it would be a big hole in the community, I think. Imagine not um, supplying 45% of the blood in this country. Imagine having a house fire and, and nobody shows up to help you find a place to stay or provide you know, clothing or just overnight necessities. It's just hard to imagine that people would just be on their own. We know that there's always going to be disaster. It's not if we have a disaster, it's when we have a disaster. So imagine a tornado coming through the Berwick area, which I don't really want to imagine, but imagine that. And it levels 15 homes. Without the American Red Cross, there wouldn't be a place to shelter those people. If they didn't have family to go to or someplace else, then there wouldn't be a, a place to shelter. So. Without the American Red Cross, I think there would be a lot of sadness and a lot of people that after a major disaster wouldn't know where to go or what to do. And soldiers wouldn't be able to be granted leave because there wouldn't be anybody to validate their story. So it would be, I think it would be a lot different. For more information on the local American Red Cross offices you just heard about, log on to the National Red Cross website and enter your zip code to find your local office. And by the way, thank you to all of the Red Cross employees and volunteers for all the work that you do in our communities.